Thank you. In every crisis, there's a message. Crises are nature's way of Excuse me. crises are nature's way of forcing change, breaking down old structures, shaking loose negative habits, so that something new and better can take their place. Thank you. Clerk will call the roll. Thirteen present. A quorum is present. Uh, to start the evening, I'd like to ask Officer Ryan Schmidt to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any additions or changes? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. Resignation, city attorney. Uh, <clears throat> letter from Jean Kittleson advising that uh, effective April 2nd of this year, she wishes to resign from the city's transit commission and the police and fire commission. She indi indicates it's been an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of the city of Sheboygan on both of these commissions. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to accept and file. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file the resignation. Any discussion? All those in, I'm sorry. Clerk will call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion carries. Is there anyone for the public forum tonight, City Clerk? Yes, there is. Or there are, excuse me. Uh, first on the list is David Summers. Is David here? David, would you like to come up to the front mic here, please? David, can I have your home address? 2332 Carmen Avenue, apartment 6H. Carmen Avenue? Yes. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. Can you pull the mic down a little bit so everybody will hear? There you go. You will have five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Some quick facts. Methadone is a synthetic opiate that was delivered that was developed by German chemists in 1937, introduced in the United States as a treatment for addicts in the 60s. In Russia, methadone treatment is illegal. Health officials there are not convinced of its treatment efficiencies. My name is David Summer. I personally gathered over 50 signatures on the petition remove the Qua quality addiction management or QAM from the greater area of Sheboygan. From the dates 3613 to 31313, I went all over getting signatures in the Sheboygan area. I got I called many places in our city. Not many people are aware of this. I called the Aurora Clinic, I called our police department, I even talked to people at City Hall. There's lots of people that are unaware that we have a methadone clinic in Sheboygan. I'm sorry. There are six other clinics in Wisconsin. One in Milwaukee and one in Green Bay, so why do we need one in Sheboygan? It's bringing morphine, Oxycontin, and heroin addicts from the surrounding areas like Port Washington and Manitowoc to Sheboygan to get treatment. The clinic only doses people from 5.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's when our children are on the streets waiting for the bus to attend school. The most, com the most common problem is falling asleep at the wheel after treatment. 
I don't want to see incidents in Sheboygan like the ones that are popping up in the other cities with clinics. We can't control what drugs are coming into Sheboygan from outside of Sheboygan, but we can remove a drug sanctuary. If I was an opiate dealer, I would target areas with clinics. Recently, with the last thaw, I, like many others, had a basement flooding. So I dug a trench to get rid of it. At first, I dug and it got worse and worse. Then I finished the trench and it receded. Let's finish this trench and remove the pool of addicts so when a dealer comes into town, they can see an anti-drug movement and keep moving instead of staying. I don't want to have to explain to my children the facts of hardcore drugs if I don't have to. I'm not saying citizens in Sheboygan should not receive treatment. I'm simply asking that they don't receive treatment in Sheboygan. Thank you for your time. Thank you, David. Next on the list is Mike Burnett. <coughs> Mike, can I have your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Roll them. All right. What I want to talk about is the Quarry Park Beach. And there's an agreement that might be finalized tonight, and it also might be discussed and open to public comment. But I find that unlikely to happen. This, um, I'll start out right here on the management services agreement, whereas, whereas the city finds that the Quarry Park Beach, water areas in Quarry View Community Center, located in Quarry Park, are feature-rich feature assets which have been underutilized by the public and blah, 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 blah. But then you get into it, underused by the public, and you get into Sheboygan Press, 1949. You have here people actually diving off the cliffs. And it's like, but it's, for, for the four days has drove relief of th thousands of people a day to the quarry. Then you have on here 1968 in droves the warmer weather. And it's like, and it's so packed, it looks, like something out of a refugee scene where everybody's just overpacked on something. Then you get into one of my favorites, and it's like because I'm told we need this because nobody uses the quarry and everything floats to it. Here you have from the best of Sheboygan County 2003, the top beaches in Sheboygan County, number one being the quarry, two being Fireman's Park and Elkhart Lake, whatever that is. Then the Plymouth Water Park, YMCA, and number five, Lake Michigan. But the bottom line is, people love the quarry, always loved the quarry, but somehow nobody goes there now. It was pretty cool when they opened it up last year. A lot of people used it. It was a good time, kind of expecting the same this year. I mean, it's why it needs to be turned into uh, Amtrak, public-private thing, I don't know. But then you have a big story somebody did back in, uh, in 1980 and malevolent or maligned, and it's the same thing. It's about overcrowding, and it dabbles on, on death at the quarry, and it speaks specifically of one specific death and something around the case, but it also mentions that the deaths and accidents at the quarry are a mere fraction of what's happening at the outlying, outlying waters. And it's like, that's all I have on this, and have fun. Thank you, Michael. Uh, next on the list is Barbara Beck. Thank Barb, you. Can I get your home address, please? Yes, it's 714A Superior. 714A, the Garden District of Sheboygan. Okay. Um, you will have five minutes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I am here tonight to talk about uh, some concerns I have with regard to landlord tenant issues. Um, for many years, I owned my own home, and due to some unfortunate circumstances, I now live on Superior Street between 7th and 8th. And I'm used to owning my own property and caring for it appropriately. However, I have tenants below me that have a different um, perception of what it means to care for property, including not taking garbage out and throwing it in the backyard for weeks on end. Box Springs, I'm on number two. Um, walks aren't being shoveled, etc. I know that there are ordinances in the city that address all of these issues. However, if 
you call the police department, it is very likely that you will be retaliated against by either your landlord. In my case, Mr. Flynn has sent me a letter telling me that if I continue to complain about the unsanitary conditions, et cetera, in my neighborhood and then the properties he owns, they will evict me, not the tenants who are throwing the 15 bags of garbage out in the backyard every week. So my suggestion is it would behoove the city of Sheboygan to be a little more aggressive in trying to get the, ten the landlords who own numerous properties, and I'm sure you know who they are, to, real to start taking more care of their properties and trying to upgrade them. It would only benefit the city of Sheboygan because as properties are improved, so does their tax value increase. I looked at the home I'm living in. Now, depending on economics, I would have thought it would have been worth less last year than this year because allegedly we are coming out of a recession. However, it is almost $1,200 less tax estimated value, assessed value, whatever, this year than it was last. And as I see the deterioration in my one block of Superior Street between 7th and 8th and walk through my neighborhoods and see that deterioration occurring all over what used to be a beautiful portion of the city of Sheboygan, I just would like to encourage all of you to take seriously the concerns that good tenants bring to you and put a little more pressure on those people that own a lot of these rental properties because I want to live in a nice neighborhood in a nice location without having to deal with garbage and box springs, et cetera. And the only way I can do that right now is to continue to call the city and call the city police, and in turn, I get threatened by my landlord. So for what it's worth, I just thought I'd kind of bring that out in, to the public and say, I think it would benefit all of us. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great night. Thank you, Barb. And last on the list is Colin Catchell. <clears throat> Colin, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 321 Bluff Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of the quarry. I'm on the Parks and Rec Board, and <clears throat> I came to the city six years ago because it's there's so much to do here. It's a city of parks. It's a great place to live. And we worked really hard on this committee to get that park opened, you know, because the slide was down, to get it open for swim at your own risk. And it opened a little late in July. The lake was warm by then. If you guys remember, it was 70 degrees now last year, and that really warmed the lake up. So it didn't get a lot of use, but there was a lot of people. I would go there sometimes. I would count up to 50 people there. Uh, this, this year, again, I think it would get a lot of use just from the public in those early months, end of, end of May, June, and beginning of July. Um, the, the new plan was to put a kind of a bouncy park that's at the beach. It's in the agreement, it'll be voted on tonight, and then there'll be one where kids will have life jackets. I think that's a fun idea. The only thing I have a concern with is that they get the lease for a dollar and they get the entire beach, and people that wanna use public access have to walk around the back. I think that it could be split, and the company has half the beach, and the public has the other half, because essentially it's a, still a public facility, the fence is open. I think that would be, you know, kind of an amendment that should go into that agreement because if they're getting it for a dollar, you know, I'm paying my taxes here, they're from out of town, and now I've got to pay just to use the beach. It just seems a little unfair. I think fit, split a 50-50, you have the fun zone, you have the public zone, and it would make everybody happy. I think that could make things work. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. Thank you. Could I have Ryan Schmidt come back up? Earlier tonight, I started the meeting out with asking Officer Schmidt to, uh, to lead us in the pledge. As mayor, uh, I've been invited to many dinners and things to represent you, the city, um, whether it be the Chambers Gala, Annual Gala, or the SEDC. This weekend, I had the pleasure of being invited to the uh, Sheboygan Police Department Service Awards. There are different awards that are given out at the service awards, Medal of, of Valor for officers uh, 
extraordinary bravery. Uh, Civilian Employees of the Year, City's Distinguished Service uh, Awards for citizens who help out the department, Life Savings Awards for uh, officers who save people's lives. And tonight, out of all the awards uh, that were given to different officers and different civilians, the I'm going to have Officer Schmidt, Ryan Schmidt here because he was named Officer of the Year for the Sheboygan Police Department. And Ryan is well known around the department as the tech guy. Ryan is one of two officers who initially assigned to implement a tax pro TAC program. Uh, through his implementation of this, so this software, Ryan still continues to help out his other and maintain the system while helping out other officers that use the system. Ryan is a quiet and humble officer, as you can tell by the look on his face today. He's on being here in front of us. Because of this, some of Ryan's activities fly under the radar. And in 2012, we experienced a rash of graffiti by a tagging crew. Ryan and I identified that crew and by using the viaduct on Erie Avenue, was able to help solve the crimes and Ryan approached a private business, Sherwin Williams, store to promise for free paint to paint over some of the graffiti that we've had in this city. Ryan attends number, uh, has attended many and numbers of the meetings of, of the Gateway Neighborhood Association, the Erie Avenue. I've seen him at both, both of those associations. And he does a great job representing the city of Sheboygan. Throughout Ryan's last year, Ryan has demonstrated his loyalty and to the organization of the Sheboygan Police Department by taking community involvement to a whole new level. Through his work, Ryan has set high standards for other officers to follow. Ryan has done this with an overwhelming and unwavering positive attitude. And because Ryan's quiet demeanor, most of Ryan's everyday work goes unnoticed. So today, Tonight, I'm honored to introduce to you the council in the city of Sheboygan, the officer of the year, Ryan Schmidt. You want to say a couple of words? I guess, uh, thank you again. Um, I know I had given a speech uh, this past Friday. I was dumbfounded by this. It really says a lot to to be recognized, and a lot of it says the, the support that we have, uh, and it's not just us, it's the community and, and as a whole, and it's really reassuring when you see things start to turn around, we're getting there. So do what we can to help out, and we appreciate all the help. Thank you, Thank and you. congratulations. Public hearings, Alderman Hammond. I'm sorry. You just need to, yeah, read the four. Public hearing access for special assessment of parking district number one. We're going to take all four together. Mm -hmm. A hearing to confirm special assessment of parking districts number two. A hearing to confirm special assessments of parking district number four. And a hearing to confirm special assessment of parking districts number five. Anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone wishing to be heard? And anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Move to close the hearings. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the hearings be closed. Clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt all ROs, all committee reports, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. That will be for 3-1 through 3-24. Is there any discussion? None. Clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. 4-1 will hold for 5-1. 4-3 through 4-7 will be referred with 4-4 four, four being referred to Finance and the Redevelopment Authority. It's 4-4 four, four to Redevelopment Authority also. 
Five one, a resolution introduced by Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're taking four one, and I need to suspend the rules. Um, I need a motion to uh, take a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspension? Suspension only. See none. Clerk will call the roll on the suspension. Thirteen ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Heineman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, then I want to uh, put resolution five one uh, on his passage. Second. And we're going to accept and file R O four one with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Second. That's. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Alderman Heideman. Okay, and this is a resolution regarding uh, request for bids for uh, the regional uh, wastewater treatment facility and the drying project that we're working on. Any other questions or discussion? We'll be passing resolution and filing the RO. Mm -hmm. Clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 4 2 from Alderman Vanderwilly. 5 2. 5 2. Alderman Vanderwilly authorizing the city attorney to engage in outside legal counsel. Alderman Vanderwilly. I move the. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Vote on dis suspension first. Clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Vanderwilly. I move the excuse me. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved, seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwilly. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. Five three. Will I over? Five four and five five will both both be referred to finance. Report of committees. Report six one of law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number forty nine forty three. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderbilt. Is Christine Stangle here this evening? She is here. Um, her license was denied um, based on. Um, we've actually had quite a few um, conversations with her in law and licensing. Um, for a while, she was um, the agent for one of the taxi cab companies while driving for another one. Um, she, at the, her license expired in June 2012 for actually ta her actual taxi cab driver's license. Um, and then we did have her reapply, or she applied. We had her in front of our committee. Um, we asked her if she had been driving from the time that her license expired until the present time. And at, that, at our last meeting, she had said no, she'd only been dispatching. However, in previous conversations with her, she did say that she was, um, the committee you know, vividly remembers her telling us that she had been driving previously, so we did deny her license. Christine, would you like to address the council, come up and address the council, please? Your home address? 1111 North 12th Street. Okay. Um, on behalf of myself, I believe there's been a big misunderstanding as far as I was an operator of one business and then um, that did fold, you denied whatever. But I was working for another business, but I was not driving, I was dispatching. So maybe the misunderstanding came when somebody asked me if I was working, they just assumed that I was driving. But I was um, dispatching, I have several articles here that can, um, and a wit couple of witnesses that can basically prove that as far as my disability, I've been unable to drive and I've been um, under constant doctor care and recently have been allowed to resume driving. Therefore, I reapplied for my license and I don't know what's going on here as far as 
people saying I was driving or anything, you know, so I do, like I said, I have some witnesses that, you know, I was dispatching, I, I was seen in a taxi, if I was riding around a taxi, I was dispatching at the time. That's pretty much all I can say for, you know, I brought whatever documents you need to see as far as, I've, I'm, I have an eviction notice, so as far as falling behind and not being able to work and have been contacted with the Salvation Army, but I do have a disability and this is the only thing that I can do is pretty much sit and drive if I am able to, you know, so if I'm denied my license to drive, I will be out of a house, out of any kind of job. I mean, and my boss for the All-Star Taxi, she would not allow me to drive if I didn't have my license. She's not gonna be stupid and risk her insurance and her whole job for that. <laughs> so I don't know if you need to talk to any of the people I brought along or. Any, any questions for the applicant? Alderman, uh, for the applicant? Yes. Okay, Alderman Carr. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Um, did you tell the Law and Licensing Committee after I asked how many hours a week you drive? And did you tell the committee you drive 36 hours a week? No, I might have mentioned I work 20 to 25 hours a week and I dispatch. I just, it, I think, like I said, the term, like when I people ask me if I work, they assume that it meant driving and I'm saying that I work, but I'm not driving, I was dispatching. So I did say that I work 20, 25 hours a week, but I didn't clarify that it was just dis dispatching, you know, as far as I didn't know that I needed to. So what you're saying is I've, uh, <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I sit on of licensing. Right. And I, I witnessed you driving a taxi to the clinic. Did I not witness that? It's possible I could have been going for a, a doctor's visit, but I wasn't driving were, customers or. Were, were you driving an all-star taxi with people in the no. vehicle? No, if, if there was people in the vehicle, it was my son that drives along with me to help me with my disability, getting in and out of the vehicle or anything like that. I have not taken any customers in an all-star taxi since I applied for my license again. So you were driving an all-star taxi to the clinic? It could have been a, a Abbey taxi or all-star taxi. They let me use their vehicles to go to my doctor's appointments to pick up my prescription. Okay, I've never once picked up a customer. Then, so you drove for Abbey taxi and you drove for all-star taxi. I did not drive. I'm, I work for them. I'm under their insurance as far as being an employee, but I have not picked up customers driving. But you're driving a taxi, two taxis, without having a license. I, put, I, I don't see, like I feel that I thought, you know, as long as I'm employed under the business that I would be under their insurance to drive any vehicle, you know, as far as, because the only time I've ever gone is to my doctor's appointments, pick up my prescription. And that was maybe once, twice. I have not picked up any customers in, in any of the, the cab taxis. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it's somebody's insurance, you know, taking somebody that's not insured and risking their life and driving them around. I have been a taxi driver on and off for about six, seven years since was in Sheboygan. There's been several instances, I don't know if there's any police officers here that are aware of that I have turned in some drunk drivers that I've seen on the street and tried to help out, like finding old people that have wandered away from the, the, their nursing homes and stuff like that and like be helpful when I'm out there, you know, supposed to be driving to help the city as well. So, any other questions, Alderman Cal? No. Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? Alderman Vanderwilling. So we, we did, did deny your license on Tuesday, last week, Tuesday. Have you driven the uh, taxi since then? Yes. Okay, but nobody said that, you know, turn in your license, you can't drive till you actually have it taken away. This is a probationary license. So I thought until the, this, this appeal comes, that I'm allowed to drive because I have my temporary license and it's all. So could you verify if once we deny on, a, on at our committee level, can they drive with the provisional? And nobody did state that. If you want to look at the records that. City Attorney. The uh, Lawn Licensing Committee is just a recommendation. So uh, wouldn't, I don't know what was discussed there about driving temporarily or not, but the, that doesn't deny the license that Council denies the license. Okay, thank you. So her temporary one would be until we deny tonight. What you're saying? Yeah, if she's got a temporary. She a temporary I, one I don't know. Any other questions of the council? All right, thank you very much. I'll turn it back to the floor then, and uh, the motion is.
was to deny license number 4143. <coughs> Clerk, will call the roll. Nine eyes, four donos. Motion carries to deny the application. 6 2, a report of committee from law and licensing recommending taxi, denying taxi driver license number 9127. Alderman Vanderwilde. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwilde. Is Abraham Loya here this evening? He is not here um, based on his uh, negative recommendation from the police department as well as. Uh, Recent, very recent violations, we voted four to zero to deny. Is there any other discussion on taxi driver license number 9127? See none, clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. 6-3, committee report from salary and grievance recommending modifying city's, city's residency requirements. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the substitute resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt and pass the substitute resolution. Under discussion, Alderman Riesler. Any other discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Eight ayes, five noes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Six four, report a committee from finance authorizing amendments to the $2,750,000 City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin Industrial Development Revenue Bonds. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? See no discussion. The, the clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6 5. Report a committee from finance recommending requiring two-thirds vote on adoption of new fees and increasing or extension of existing fees by the Common Council. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we put the, uh, accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon this passage. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the committee report and put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Hammond, your light's still on. Yeah constantly is on. Um, I was one of the ones in finance that voted no for this. Um, I have some concerns about primarily hamstringing future councils. Um, I understand the, the gist of why this is put together, uh, but the fact of the matter is from a practical standpoint, um, when you look at some of the things that happen inside city government, you know, if, if the state passes down a fee or the feds pass down a fee, we need to be able to implement that. And I know it has some broad parameters to be able to do that, but I just have a, a big problem with, you know, five people being able to hold up the will of the majority. Um, I also, again, have a huge concern about hamstringing future councils with, um, you know, something as, as restrictive um, as this, given the budgetary environment. Um, you know, I know some have said that you know, part of the reason I'm against this is because we want to extend the garbage fee again, and nothing can be further from the truth. I have uh, no illusions of wanting that thing to continue, but I do think from a good governance standpoint, we need to make sure that councils and the mayor's office have the tools they need to be able to balance budgets and take care of, um, of, of future uh, revenue. So I don't support this, um, you know, if it was a little more broad based, or you know, based off of revenue over a certain amount or something like that, I might be able to get my arms around it. But just to say that any fee can only, needs, requires a, a two-thirds vote, uh, it's a little bit too restrictive in my mind. Thank you. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I was uh, the other person in finance who voted against this resolution. Um, 
I was pretty wound up that night in some, because I really have some very strong feelings about this. I'm be a little more restrained tonight. Um, but uh, to speak to the fact that the primary reason that I oppose this is that it is profoundly and fundamentally undemocratic. Um, and this really came home to me after the Finance Committee meeting, went home, you know, went to sleep, woke up at four in the morning, and I bet that's happened to any one of us, um, wide awake, and then just realized that this committee, this council, could work long and hard on a budget, it could come to an agreement, and we do work long and hard, and it is often contentious, and we could vote, and it would be a 10 to 5 vote, and the five people who voted would win. The five people who voted against the budget would be in the majority, even though they were in the minority. It's not good policy. It's not what our democratic principles tell us. We're pretty well grounded in majority rule. And um, so we do have some hard decisions that are going to be coming up. Budgets are going to be hard to formulate. They're going to be hard to pass. But let's do it democratically. Let's not be like the US Senate. That is our really good example of supermajoritarian politics, where the minority rules. And as you will note, in the past few years, the US Senate has not done a great deal. It has not advanced, in my humble opinion, Democrat or Republican, the, the uh, interests of the country. And we can certainly scale that down here. It's not quite, quite so dramatic, and it is, it's, it's relating to the budget. But it is important that we adhere to, if 10 of us say, this is the way it should be, and our constituents are unhappy with us, they can vote us out of office. But to have five people say, I don't like it, put a stick in the wheel, and end up with a budget document that really does not reflect the will of the majority just doesn't seem right to me. It also seems to be a um, violation of the standing rules uh, of majority rule, and therefore I um, uh, move to amend the resolution uh, tonight requiring uh, that before it pass, it pass on a supermajority vote, two-thirds. Second. In move and second to amend the document, and the amendment is to require a supermajority vote on this document. I am going to turn to the city attorney. <laughs> so I'm not sure we can do that. Yeah, I, uh, I would caution uh, uh, establishing, a, acting on a document, and in that document say it has to be passed by any percentage or any number of votes. Um, we've got the, uh, the statutes call for, say that anything that the council doesn't uh, provide for that requires a supermajority uh, can pass with a majority vote uh, of the members present. And to say that just by an amendment that you could not follow the state law there, the majority rule would apply, uh, I, I would, would say would be out of order. Alderman Donahue, um, hearing, well, I guess you want. Well, and I did think about that, of course. And um, if you review Robert's revised rules of order, section 68, and those are the uh, rules that require <coughs> amendments that require a two thirds vote, the standing rules of a body which are being amended, and that's what we're doing. We are saying that our long tradition of majority rule in terms of fees is no longer going to be the standing rule of this body, requires a two-thirds vote. Well, the council rules are established by ordinance and not by resolution, so I don't believe that we could amend the council rules by amending this resolution. It would require an ordinance to change the council rules my opinion. Alderman Donahue, while I understand and recognize your motion, um, I feel too that the motion is out of order at this time. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I'm actually in support of this. I helped create what this was for. It's not binding in any ways. It's not tying up hands. It's actually making government more transparent, knowing why are we increasing fees? Why are we creating a fee? Yes, there's state funds that have to be done, state fees that we have to take on. We'll have someone come in front of us and say, the state's making us do this, we vote on it. There's no reason that someone would vote against it if the state says we have to. Other fees that are out there, if we have to increase them due to budget reasons or due to covering our, our costs and building inspection or whatnot, they can come in front of us, the council, in front of the public and say, why are we doing this? It's making our fees more transparent to the public and also it's not really hindering. It may be an extra step we have to go through, but in my opinion, it's not finding any hands, it's not handcuffing them on their fees. It's just making it more transparent and we can still pass those fees. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I um, respectfully disagree. I, it is binding. I mean, that's what the resolution states. It does require a two-thirds vote. I mean, there, there's no way you can not use the word binding when it comes to this resolution. I voted in favor of this in finance, but um, I, I didn't wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I, um, actually, I instantly regretted my vote, I mean, but knowing full well that it was going to come to council anyways. Um, I, I can't stand for it for a couple of reasons now, the more that I thought about it, and, and it's already been mentioned by two of my uh, acquaintances here. I, I mean, it pretty much does give full control to five people. And um, I, I, to, to pass a budget and then have to come back and vote on it just because there may or may not be a new fee, uh, fee in it and have the budget die because we don't get the two thirds vote because there's five people that decide they wanna hold, the, hold up the entire process. Other person, Donnie, who said it best. I mean, it, it is pretty, in my opinion, it is undemocratic. Um, the second reason why I can't really support this is because it does bind the hands of future councils. It doesn't allow for more, uh, much uh, flexibility. And uh, I, I'm not gonna be here forever and I'm not gonna vote for a, a document that is gonna bind future councils. And then there was one other statement I wanted to make, but I um, kind of lost it there, so thank you. You think of it, hit your button again. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name's on this resolution. And again, the reason I brought it before finance and again, this court, it's not the two thirds that I'm worried about. It's the fees I'm worried about. Our citizens, we, we put a garbage fee on our citizens. And it wasn't a garbage fee. It was a fee to plug a hole. That's what it was. We call it a garbage fee because we could get away with calling something giving something a name. So what is the next fee going to be? Um, the sky is falling fee? Uh, because I don't think that's the appropriate way that we should be uh, getting revenue from our uh, constituents. And I heard it loud and clear from my neighbors and friends that they didn't want to be feed. So whether it's two thirds, a simple majority, I would rather see the people that, were, uh, that objected to having a fee amend the, the amount of votes it had to have to be able to pass rather than kill the resolution altogether. Uh, so I'm in support of the two thirds. Thank you, Alderman Heidman. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, and just, <clears throat> I do think that as we talk about fees and as we talk about budgets and so forth, we are completely and utterly transparent and the process of voting for it, whether it's two thirds or a simple majority has nothing to do really with transparency. And Alderman Heidemann, with great respect, my, my seatmate and, um, and <laughs> my esteemed colleague, it makes all the difference in the world whether 10 people, a majority, control what happens in this body or whether five people control. It's called democracy. This is anti-democratic. And let's celebrate and realize that the tax rate levy the tax levy rate in the city of Sheboygan has remained level since 2005. So for a period of seven going on eight years, this council has done an extraordinary job in holding down costs and holding that line flat. We've done a good job, but we've always done it by majority vote. And if, when it comes to the imposition of additional fees, increasing building permit fees or whatever, if a majority of the council thinks that's a good idea, then that's what we call democracy. And that, that is a critical concern that I have. We have demonstrable proof of what happens when the minority rules, and it's not a pretty sight. 
It, we've done a good job in Sheboygan. I think we need to keep doing it. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, Alderman Downey stole a little bit of my thunder. I, you know, I, with all due respect, I, it doesn't get much more transparent than it is now. Um, anybody that sat through the garbage fee debate, there were many of them, and many of them were televised. It was extremely transparent. So saying that you need a super majority or a two thirds or whatever the language you want to put on it doesn't make it more transparent. What makes it transparent is the process we go through where all of us sit in this body and we have the debate. And again, that the majority should decide, not the minority. I just want to mention a little bit about you know, how complicated and convoluted this can get come budget time. The council approves a budget. That budget may have an increase in fees, and Attorney McLean, please correct me if I'm wrong, by separate ordinance, those fees have to come back and be approved. So if we pass a budget and five or six people block the ordinance that um, raises the fees that we approved in the budget, where do we stand? That's one hell of a mess that we have to try to figure out. So again, I would encourage people, I wholeheartedly agree with, with Alderman Heinemann, we need to be very, or, and Alderman Verse, we need to be very transparent when we're, when we're talking about fees and implementing fees or raising fees. But again, to say that you know, five people get to make that decision, so you know, five people who represent about 15,000 people versus you know, 10 who represent 30,000, yeah, I have a problem with that. Um, thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, on, on the face of this, um, it, it sounds very good. I, I can't stand fees. I especially hate the garbage fee. Um, I'm, I'm not in favor of, of uh, fees in, in general. But um, I do support um, Alderman Hammond's um, uh, previously stated um, reasoning that uh, we are tying up future council. Uh, we're in the last month of this council session, and right before we go out, we're gonna pass or we're going to vote on something that is going to affect a future council. We haven't even seen a budget for 2014 yet, and frankly, I would like to solve the roughly $500,000 deficit for 14 and the 1.7 million for 15, I would like to solve both those issues this year. Um, this past council session, I brought up an issue uh, that would have dealt with that and that would have been the privatization of the garbage collection. That would have required a fee. So for that reason, um, and Alderman uh, Donahue's reason, the, the tyranny of the minority, um, you know, I don't want to have a minority body or group be able to affect the outcome without ever seeing a budget. Nobody here has given any kind of numbers or what their solution is for solving the budget. I have no idea, you know, what that's going to look like. We're going to go through that this year and we're going to see what's going to come up and what the ideas are going to be. It may be privatizing garbage, it may be eliminating services, it may be getting rid of some people, it may be, you know, whatever we, you know, come up with. But to say that, you know, we can't add, you know, or we're going to put a two-thirds uh, supermajority on something like this, I, I can't support that without having some other concrete, you know, budgetary figures and, and solutions that are going to solve our problems in front of me. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Carlson, you must have thought of what you missed. I did, thank you, Mayor. And at the risk of uh, beating a, a dead horse here, um, no offense to anyone. However, um, just speaking on the transparency, not only do we sit and debate the budget here as a, as a full council, we, we debate it as a full committee of the whole, and it goes through every single committee in this city at least once. So there's nothing but transparency in this entire process. I just wanted to expand on Alderman Hammond. And um, Alderman, Ballinger kind of touched on the, the item that I, was, uh, that I forgot. This document is in no way productive to um, our budget process. Our, better, our, our time is better spent actually trying to find solutions to the issue, not just put pretty much just a, a giant stop sign in, in front of the entire process. So I, I, would, I would much rather see solutions come forward to help us going forward than th seeing this measure passed tonight. Thank you. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess uh, in lights of this, the way this is going, not see this die. Uh, first off, 
we currently don't, a lot of the fees that are instituted, we don't get that in front of the council. It's passed in committee and there it goes. Um, this, or, this resolution right here would make it come forward to the full sitting body. So in light of that, I would like to make an amendment on there and not have it as super majority vote, but just a simple majority vote. Second. I move it, move and seconded to re yeah. remove the super majority language. Correct. Which then it would only require a majority vote. Who seconded it? I seconded it. On the amendment, only speaking on the amendment, Alderman Hammond. Just on, I just have a clarification for Attorney McLean. Sure. On the amendment. Um, Attorney McLean, when, a, when we, or when a, a fee is increased or added, um, that needs to come through this body. Are there any bodies that can implement a fee without council approval? At just at the committee level? Uh, Transit Commission, which is a separate We can't control entity. that. Uh, the library can set I can't control that. fines and fees and so forth. Uh, but other than that, I can't think of any. Okay. So we're already voting on those fee increases by a simple majority now. That's the way I'd. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. If I could, uh, another, if I could ask Alderman Versi for clarification, uh, there's a difference between a majority of the members present, which is uh, the default rule, or uh, currently the document says affirmative vote of two thirds of the membership of the entire council. And I'm not sure what you're proposing on your amendment, if it's to be a majority of the members present or a member, a majority of the full membership. Sounds like, sounds like either way it's getting shot down, but I'll just do the, the current body. Not the sitting body, but the current. So the full, the full. No, not the sit, full sitting body. Current. Those simple present. majority. Simple, simple majority, majority of, of the present. The all all the present. present of that day. <clears throat> Alderman Donahue, on the amendment. And just to clarify, so that would essentially be the status quo. Yes. Absolutely nothing changes. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? We'll vote on the amendment first. Clerk will call the roll. Eleven ayes, two noes. Motion carries. Now we need a motion on the resolution on as amended. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution as amended. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Ten eyes, three no's. Motion carries. 6-6, a re committee report from Public Works recommending management services agreement regarding Quarry View Park. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Um, they accept and adopt the, uh, the RC and put the resolution on as passed with the, amended, with the amended agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the committee report and put the resolution as amended upon its passage. Any discussion? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, to spend a little, uh, a few minutes, or a few seconds, excuse me, to just briefly talk about this. I am gonna support this. Um, I know there's some concerns about the beach um, and those types of things, but I think I wanna point out a couple things. One, it's, it's one summer, three months, Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, and I, 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 I think that, is worth noting. The second thing, and the part that I, I think is, is, is best, when we looked at all those pictures that Mr. Burnett showed, one of the unique things about that is that there were lifeguards there, which is something that hasn't been there in quite a long time. So with these people down there, we're gonna have lifeguards. We're gonna have a safer environment um, at no cost to the city. You know, people talk about there's gonna be a, a fee for these folks, for our city residents. When we had to slide in the diving board, there was a fee then. 
um, to use the facility as well. Again, one of the, the part that you know, I just can't get over is that we're going to have you know, lifeguards down there that you know, can watch over the, the people in, in, the, in the quarry, um, which is a lot better than what we have now. Um, and although I know it's rather inconvenient, and maybe over the course of the next year we can look at um, alternatives and alternative access points and things like that, but there is access for city residents, albeit I understand it's a little bit of a hike, um, but maybe again over the course of the year we can look at um, other access points that aren't maybe quite so inconvenient to residents. But I think this is a great opportunity um, for a couple of reasons. One, I, I think it's kind of a neat idea. Um, and secondly, I like the, the fact that we're finally going to have lifeguards back down at, at the quarry um, you know, to watch, hopefully, the, the hundreds and thousands of people that are going to go there this year. So I would encourage people to support this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I am too in favor of this um, adventure by the city, but I would like to amend the agreement to allow access on the, on the beach to the public without a fee so that we both have the access to the, the beach by the, the general public without having to, uh, having to pay a uh, fee to get in there. Second. It's been moved and seconded to amend the <coughs> agreement to allow public access to for beach and swimming only, non-use of their equipment for residents at, or for people at not, no fee. Under discussion on the amendment only. Amendment Donahue. Uh, I guess my only question is how does that work? <laughs> it's my understanding that they have the entire beachfront. David? David. I'm going to call uh, Dave Beeble, the Director of Public Works. <clears throat> David? Thanks. It's my understanding, I mean, the, 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 the company is going to be providing apparatus equipment at no cost to the city, and in order for them to do that, they're going to have to have restricted access and charge a fee to recover their cost of installing this equipment and the lifeguards. So um, we felt that when we went through this through the committees and listening to, you know, what about bringing back the slide at the quarry? We should bring back the quarry of old. We knew that that would be an expensive venture for the city of Sheboygan and try to get that type of capital investment put back at the quarry. With negotiating with this company, it was brought up to us that, hey, we have an opportunity that we could maybe bring this equipment at no cost, but in lieu of that and save no cost, we would then manage it, this company would manage it for us manage the lifeguards, but then be able to capture the revenue at the gate, as the city did when we ran it. Basically, we're just having a third party operate the marina. So I think if by having public access, I think the company then would say, well, that's fine, but you would have to then reimburse us for our cost. Then for those city residents that are enjoying the quarry, we would like to be paid a management fee to um, accommodate those city residents to come in at free. So I, and, and personally, I don't think we have that in our budget. Um, that's, you know, it, it's a viable um, consideration, but at this point, I think we, we're not prepared to be able to fund that. Dave, Dave, I know there is no formal agreement yet on the fees or how the fee structure will work. <coughs> but in some of the um, document or, or how can I say this? In some of, some of the ways that they've laid it out as potential, they have had a, a like a two-tiered system where you would get a bracelet for the use of, of equipment and you would pay a general fee to get in as a model. Yeah, I think what, they, what they're suggesting is they have the beach access fee and the, sh the shallow water zone would be a lower cost then they would have wristbands available for the deeper water zone where a lot of the floatable uh, rafts and apparatus that they would install, that would have a higher fee associated with that section of the quarry. Any questions of David before we... Alderman Donahue. I've pressed my buzzer too much tonight and it's not working. <laughs> um, my question, um, I mean, did the, I just remember swimming at the quarry and. It, the, the public beach is this sort of half moon. 
and I can't quite see how you would divide that up. Was that discussed in the committee, and is that a viable option? I, I think it would severely impact their operation if, if we started to say we're going to divide half the beach, half the beach is paid access, and half the beach is just open, swim at your own. Um, I think that would take away quite a bit of their, what I would say, their, their zone of fun zone, that they want to call it, in terms of where they want to access their apparatus and their, their um, equipment. And I assume their lifeguards would save people who are in trouble in public areas as well as in their private areas. I, I, would, I would think they would be, okay. yes, their duty, yeah. Any other questions for David? Thank you, Mr. Beadle. Again, we're voting on the amendment, and the amendment was to um, allow beach, beach access with non-use of the equipment to not have a fee. Clerk will call the roll. Uh, four ayes and nine noes. The amendment fails, so we're back to the original agreement. Any questions on the original agreement? <coughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Oops. I will in just one second. Eleven eyes, two noes. Motion carries. Six seven through six nine will be referred. Seven one will be referred to public protection and public works. So we're dual referral there. Matters laid over, eight one. A resolution from Alderman Hammond, Deccan Carlson, and Donahue authorizing transfer, transfers and appropriations of 2013 budget. budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Un is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. 13 <clears throat> ayes. Motion carried. 9-1. Alderman Hammond, a motion to discharge the Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Housing Practices. Yes, as you mentioned, I move to uh, discharge the Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Housing Practices. Second. The move seconded to discharge the Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Housing Practices. For the layman, this means we're pulling it from committee and bringing it to the council. We're going to vote first on motion to discharge or pull it from the committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to pass the ordinance um, by Alderman Heidemann and Lassard repealing and recreating Chapter 46 of the Municipal Code relating to fair housing. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we pass the general ordinance Recreating Chapter 46 of the Municipal Code relating to fair housing. Is there any discussion? Alderman Heidemann. I thank you, Mayor. Um, this document has to be amended. So I've, I'm going to make a motion to uh, amend the, the proposed ordinance to add a new subsection, Section E, uh, to Section 47-46-47. Uh, yeah, Second. It's been moved and seconded, seconded to amend the fair housing ordinance. I think you all, we all received copies of that on your desks. Any questions about the amendment? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes. <clears throat> Motion carries. 
Other matters? We gotta go back and I'm sorry, nine two. <clears throat> I move that we uh, move to pass the ordinance as amended. Yep. Second. It's been moved, seconded to pass the ordinance as amended. Any discussion? Clerk call votes. Oh. Nope, sorry, don't vote yet, don't vote yet. Alderman Donahue. And just very briefly, um, Alderman, or uh, Attorney McLean, can you just explain why we're doing this or what the changes, just very briefly what the changes are? Um, it's really updating our fair housing ordinance to uh, come more closely into <coughs> compliance with the changes in the state law uh, regarding various uh, uh, categories of discrimination. And uh, the last several years we've gotten gigged by HUD for having an ordinance that really was getting more out of compliance with the state statutes. Uh, uh, the last time we had amended it, the statute was even a different number, and now it's, it's been put in a diff different section, and this, uh, as much as possible, tries to track the changes to the state law. Alderman Donahue, and again, why we're pulling it from committee and things, not, the only reason it was discussed at housing um, there just wasn't a quorum that they were able to pass it. So then that's why we forwarded it straight or it's straight to the here. But the discussion was held there. Any other discussion? See none, clerk call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. Now other matters. That would work. Other matters? Okay. Yeah. 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. That will go to law and licensing. 10.2 is an RO submitting a communication from Mike Miller of EOS Outdoor requesting permission to have rentals of stand up paddle boards and kayaks at North Beach in Sheboygan. That will go to Public Works. 10.3 is a claim from Coca-Cola Refreshments for alleged damages to their vehicle when they were traveling on a city street, struck a loose manhole cover and lost control of the vehicle and ended up in someone's yard. That will go to Finance. 10.4 is a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval for DHP LLC by David A. Heather. That will go to City Plan Commission. 10.5 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to terminate the license agreement with Morell Transfer, Inc. That will go to Finance also. Before we go into closed session, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the couple seconds you're going to give me. I just wanted to um, extend a special thank you to the hospice. Um, Thursday night there was a a fabulous event at uh, Acuity as a gracious host for the uh, We Honor Veterans. Um, they are starting a end of life care program for veterans. Um, and I, I just wanted to thank him. It was a very, very well done event. Um, the governor's office, um, the senators, and um, uh, uh, Representative Ensley were there. Um, Charlie Sykes um, and Joe Dean, who created the Honor Flights, were there to present the movie that they, they had done. It was very tastefully done. and raised a lot of money to, to do this. So I really want to just extend a great thank you for their efforts for our veterans of the of Sheboygan County. Thank you. I'll let me hand and you can stand back up oh. and move into closed session. Got it. All right, it's a mo motion to convene in closed session of the exemption provided in section 19.851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating, deliberating the possible sale of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. It's been moved, seconded to go into closed session. Clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes. Motion carries. We'll reconvene in closed session in three minutes. <laughs>